Hello, everybody. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. Let's look at the chat. Hello, Bob. Hello, Albert. Hello, Dean. How are you all doing today? Thanks for coming. This is great. We are just going to jump right into it, and I'm going to show you the first exercise that I wish I knew when I was starting guitar. I started when I was 12 years old, and I did not do this. Yeah, guitar and keys. I've dropped the keys for right now because I'm going to do another channel with keys. Right, we'll do that later. Anyway, the reason I'm talking about this is because I first had lessons at the YMCA. <laughs> this was a local YMCA, and it was a class where boys and girls could go, men and women, and I was probably the youngest one in the class. There were older people, there were people that were married, and here I was, 12 years old. I had a Stella guitar. I'm gonna have to do a video on that, <laughs> on my first guitar. It was terrible. Hey, GFJ, hello, how you doing? So, yeah, I'm not gonna talk about that right now, but it was, uh, we learned things like How many roads must a man walk down? That's the wrong key for my voice. How many roads can a man walk down before they call him a man? Right? Things like that. With the simple chords G, C, D, a minor, E minor, things like that. And my guitar was terrible. The nut was too big. The The action was terrible. It was too high off the neck. But I pursued that. And I didn't do a whole lot for a couple of years. But when I was about 14 years old, I said, I want to be a real guitar player. So I looked for a different guitar. A, a friend of my dad's told me, you need to look for a guitar with a radius in your neck. And, you know, a real guitar. So I bought an Epiphone guitar. So anyway, this is what I wish I would have done, and I'm going to share it with you today. Now, I'm going to just use my hand just for a second, and we're going to start on the D string, 5th fret. Hello, Lisa. Welcome. Now, what you want to do is, starting on the middle strings, on the D string, which is the third one down or the fourth one up, it's really called the fourth string because we number them 1, 2, 3, 4, going this direction. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, uh, well, I don't need to learn about that because, you know, I'm, I'm an intermediate or I'm an, an advanced guitar player. Well, let me show you a video. Here, let me pull it up here. And this is a really quick video. Let's see if it'll work. I'm just going to play it. It's about, I don't know, 30 seconds. This is a recording that I did yesterday of me playing this exercise quickly, and then we'll talk about it. Oops, that's not the one I want. That's the one I want. And I'm going to turn off my camera. And here we go. Where is it at? Hold on. Where'd my video go? Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to come over here and do this. Okay, let's start it again. Let's try this with a pick. And there you go. That was me yesterday 
Uh, I'm going to play that one more time at the beginning and I'm going to stop it. Okay, so I guess I should have paused it. Now I thought I was doing really good on this. Seriously, I thought, oh, this is, this is awesome. This is doing really well. And in a sense, I was. Here, let me take off the reverb on that. I'm actually doing better now. But one thing that I didn't realize that I was doing now, I was, I was playing my baby Taylor. This is a smaller guitar. And what I did was, can you hear that right there? I was bringing my finger, my pinky, off this direction, and it was making this, you know, that sound right there. And if you listen into the recording, you can hear that. Listen to this. Hear that squeak? Man alive! I didn't realize that that squeak was even there. It was, it was just... So, this is the bottom line. What happened was that I, I made this recording. I thought, oh, that's really good. I put it into my video editor, and I'm listening to it, and I said to myself, that there's a squeak there that I, that I don't want. <laughs> I need to actually work on this, is what I thought. So I'm telling you what to do here to help you to increase your foundation, the foundation of your playing. And this is a really good way to do it. So this is really good for beginners, it's really good for intermediate players, and it's really good for advanced players. If you think you're really good, make a recording of yourself and then listen to it with headphones, just like I am now. Not on your phone, you don't just look at it on your phone, but you listen to it very carefully with the volume up a little bit, and then you will realize some things that you didn't realize before. I thought I was doing great. But the problem is, <coughs> Bob says we are all beginners, just at different levels along the journey. You know what I've discovered about <laughs> GFJ? Forever, I'm forever a beginner. You know, it doesn't matter what level you're at. There's always somebody that's better than you. That's what one thing that I've discovered about that. I want you to know that you guys are all welcome. Anybody is welcome here, and I'm really appreciative of you being here and watching. So this is what I've discovered and what I've thought about this week. Not the whole week, but it was in my journey this week. And, and when I was working with some students, uh, I've got one student that's about uh, 12 or 13 years old that wants to do ACDC and, you know, Guns N' Roses and, and things like that. And he's really excited about it. And he's just really diving right in there. But he really doesn't have the technique to pull off some of the stuff he wants to do. So... I said, look, we need to work a little bit on technique. And there was another guitar player that started with me that needs the same kind of thing. He started a few months ago, three or four months ago. So I started with him on this too. And what I'd like you to try, now you'll notice that we're right in the middle of the guitar. Now you can use your finger or you can use, now this is for, uh, for Albert, right? Albert, Albert does not use a pick. Albert does finger picking. So you can do this with finger picking too. You want to make sure that you are very focused on what you're doing because we're working on some important foundational techniques here. I'm going to do it with just my finger for the moment. For finger picking, we're going to talk about using a pick in just a minute. Oh, we could use the, the orange one there. This is a Tortex pick. Or I could use the yellow one. My son loves even heavier picks than this. I I don't love heavier than, than the yellows. These are, what are these? I can't read it. 60 millimeter. And this one is, oh, that one's all worn off. Can't even see it. I'm getting off track, aren't I? This one's a 73 millimeter. Millimeter? Well, anyway, it's a thicker pick. So, Let's see, I'm gonna use my finger. Keep me on track here, guys. So what we're doing is we're starting, here's my hand on the back of the neck like this, okay? And reason, now we've talked about, I'm backing up again, we've talked about the C major scale. Right, we talked about the G major scale. Oops, sorry. Right, and so this is a little different. This is not going across the neck, but going up the neck, and we're not doing, or, 
We're not skipping any notes. We're doing something called a chromatic exercise. And I talked about chromatic exercise before. This is a little different. So what we're doing is we're going to start, well, you could always start down here on the first fret, but if you need to, start up like a, on the fifth fret or the seventh fret. It's a little bit closer to your body. It's a little easier to do. <clears throat> I need to move my mic so I can be a little more comfortable. Okay, so here, I'm going to start right there. You're going to get your hand on the back of the neck, just like this. Lisa, I think you need this. Yeah, 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 0.73 millimeter. That's right. That's what it is. It's not 73 millimeters. You're, you're correct about that, GFJ. Yes, thank you. So we've got our hand on the back of the neck like this, right? And watch me when I play this. You'll see that my hand doesn't really move. I'm not going up and down. I don't have to go like this. So we're just moving this direction, okay? Now let's look at the front. And I'm going really fast. Let me pull up my notes here. <clears throat> All right, so chromatic is really simple for the guitar. And we're playing horizontal. We want to keep the, the guitar in the same position. And you can, you can do this with a classical guitar position, like this. You can do it with uh, this position with your guitar with the waist on your right leg. You can do this standing up. You can do this in very many different places. I'm actually sitting down and I have my feet on, it's a stool, it's actually a pretty big stool, so I have both feet up there. So you can see the guitar in the, uh, you know, I'm gonna change, change this direction just a little bit. So let's do this. I'm gonna play my G note right there. And I'm just gonna hold it. I'm gonna hold it for like three to five seconds. Now, on this pinky or the fourth finger, we're gonna hold it longer. And then what we're going to do is we're, after we play the little finger, the fourth finger, we're going to move this first finger up to the sixth fret, the next fret, and then do the same thing again. I want you to do it really slow. Get your guitar out and do this with me. We are not doing this with a metronome. Now I'm moving to the seventh fret. And when you pick that little pinky up, don't make any noise. Don't do that kind of stuff. Seventh fret, eighth fret. This is called legato playing. These are also called half steps, going up to the eighth fret now with my first finger. Now one of the things that I'm doing here when I'm playing this, I've got my thumb resting on the A string. This is for just finger picking we'll talk about. Remember, we'll talk about picks in just a second. And then I'm wedging my thumb in there so my E string doesn't play either. Also, what I'm doing with my left hand is when I'm playing that note, this part of my finger down here is actually touching these strings so that they don't play, just like that. So you hear no other noise, like you don't hear, hear that, hear that harmonic? Like if I was doing it without touching anything, Can you hear that? If you can't hear that, put on headphones. Okay, you don't want that. So you want everything to be muted. You want long notes. Okay. I'm going to go up to the ninth fret. I'm going to make it even longer. Now we're gonna go backwards. Make it really quiet. First finger is on the ninth fret. Now my pinky, or my fourth finger, is going to go on 11. Lift that one up. Take your time. We're just on the D string. So you do this all the way back down to five. Now, let's talk about picking. 
like if you're going to use a pick, I'm going to use this yellow one, this 0.73 millimeter. Okay, for right hand, of course, now I like to play with the rounded edge a lot because I like the way that sounds. The tone will be different. And if you play with the, hear the difference? And where you play along that string will make a difference too. See that? Now I'm going to change to the rounded edge. I'm going to be right over this hole right now. Now you can do this on electric guitar too. I just don't happen to have my electric guitar with me. I mean, it's up on the wall there. Right there. There it is. Ding. Doing this on an acoustic guitar. So what you want to do is you want to take your hand and you want to actually use the heel of your hand to touch the E string. And you can even spill over onto the A string. And then you're playing the D string. And then this part of my finger here is touching the G string, B string, E string so that they don't play. Right? So I'm only getting that one note. Nothing else is playing. Using all down strokes. No up strokes. So we're not going to go, we're not going to go down, up, down, up. We're just doing down strokes. Just like that. We can even go slower. Next fret. Now we already did the D string, so let's move to the G string, which is the next one. So we basically have the same hand position that we did before. D string, G string, I'm moving back and forth. Yeah, I'm kind of in a, I can't move my camera. So here's my G string, D string, excuse me, D, G string. See how basically how the hand stays in the same position? This is really important. So now, let's play on the G string. Let me go look at my chat and see if there's any questions or anything that anybody is asking. Let's see what we got. Yes, Albert says, I'm a finger style player. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, like, like it. Uh, Bob says, with a pick, you would just do down picking or alternate picking? I guess the answer is yes. Well, that answered my question. Okay. I'm just looking at the chat. Yes, we're just going to do down picks right now. That's all we're doing. Down strokes. <coughs> so on the G string, now the thing about using the G string and the D string is that they are wound strings. And when you put your fingers on them, can you hear that? Right. If you accidentally go like this with your finger on the string, it's going to make a noise. So it's a really good place to do this because you can practice not making any noises since there is a chance of making a noise with this. Same thing. Got muted strings down here on the bottom, muted strings on the top. I'm touching with my fingers, putting my fingers over those strings, going to the sixth fret. Now, if you're not used to doing this, and if you can't get a really good sound fast, then you slow it down. So this would be what I would have my very beginners doing. Oops, touched it with my pick. If you're not a very beginner, you might go faster. Same kind of technique. Now we're gonna go backwards. legato playing all the time. This is really important. I know there's a couple people out there that really need this. Hear that? Okay. I, I might have made a little squeak there. Let's see. Um, I'm looking at my... Okay. I, th I was looking at my notes and I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover so far. Let's see if there's any questions. Nope. I don't see any new questions. 
Um, here we go. So you can go faster. You can keep going higher if you want to. really good sound. You can keep going. There's a little bit of squeaking going on there. I need to work on that. Right there. Did you hear that? Right there. It's harder down here. Okay. That's, that's what we want to do. So this exercise, it's really, really good to be able to learn how to do this and get that technique that you need for muting, for moving, for legato playing, for working on your picking pattern. You can, you can change things around. You can move this pick around. You can go back here farther. You can do a little palm muting if you want to. trying it out. Now, being a YouTuber, being someone who records myself all the time, <laughs> seriously, I do several uh, recordings a week, and I listen back to it because I have to edit my work and things like that. I listen to the mistakes that I make, right? If you don't do that, you're missing out on something because if you make, you know, you can take your phone. Where did I put my phone? Oh, it's down there on the floor. I'm not going to grab it. You can take your phone, if you've got a phone, and take a video of yourself and then look at it, listen to it, put on headphones, see what it sounds like. This is a really good way to check yourself because then you will be in the position of like the teacher, of someone who's actually looking instead of being behind the guitar and thinking, ah, oh, I'm doing so great. No, you'll be able to look at it and then you can say, oh wow, that, that sounds better than I thought. Or uh, that doesn't sound as good as I thought it would. That doesn't sound so good. Listen for these keys that we talked about today. Very good. Boy, it's been really fun to be here with you today. I'm going to go hang out with some people. I wonder if Albert's going to come. Albert, you can come. GFJ, I've never seen you there. Uh, Bob, I hope to see you there. Dwayne, it would be great to see you if you could come. Uh, Lisa, you're welcome to come if you've got the time. I know that you've been there before. Well, anyway, thank you for coming. Look in the description if you want to learn how to support this channel or get my book because exercises and songs and tabs are in my book. It's, it's over 400 pages now. That's what it is. And I'm working on it every week, every day. Not every day. Every month. Every week. I do something every week on that book and uh, update it every month. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for being here. We'll see you later. Take care and have a good day.